layered look at so many years of accomplishments and complexities um, what ju jump started the project and why was now the right time for it well there was a lot of interest over the years in, in films and stuff about the go-go's and it never felt right um, but as time went on we started feeling a little bit of pressure to do it before like we were too haggy <laughs> and, um, we heard about Allison, and we, we saw her stuff. We saw the Eagles documentary and uh, American Jihad, and we were super impressed with her, and we loved it. it. She was a woman, and so we approached her, and she wanted to do it. So that's how it happened. But it took a year of convincing us because we were still a little bit reticent, and but we're here. <laughs> up for this what type of access were you guys okay with or, or were you coming into this with full access full access to our archives full access to our lives were there rules well we wanted to set the rules with Allison first. <laughs> we wanted to have a hundred percent artistic control and final cut which is it absolutely not and in, in, in typical go-go's fashion we would probably would have really fucked it up so um, we gave her control. I think we were really concerned about the archival uh, footage because nobody had cameras back then really at our shows and we cameras were really weren't invented yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was like in the 1870s. Look, she hands it to me after she said everything. What do you want me to say? <laughs> I mean, no. Yeah, we, answer the next okay. question. We'll, we'll get you on the next question. Well, we, we like to be in charge all the time. <laughs> we very it don't work that way. And when we let somebody else take control, that works out really well. <laughs> okay, I saw your hand first. I noticed in a lot of the footage from back in the day that, that you were asked a lot as a female band about your relationships with one another. And I doubt very much that male bands are being asked the same questions. Do yeah. you yeah. think that things have changed? And if so, how or what other changes did you guys love to see? Well, we all had sex with each other a lot. <laughs> so, and four years later, we're still doing it. <laughs> forgiveness in place for this band um, it's been it's been something to help us grow and grow closer and after we saw it well, I mean all I wanted to do was just have sex with everyone <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to just wrap around and just hug everybody and yeah. get hugged and, and uh, it just felt like it was a very important I wasn't expecting that I was not expecting because we are family
when, you know, during that time in the 80s, I cut my hair just like you, Melinda. <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> were super supportive and in fact my dad was such a cut up he uh we were playing the greek theater in los angeles once and you know he and my mom and betty were sitting in their seats and the girls behind them were just like shh, shh. and finally they're like what are you guys doing here and my dad says oh i'm a go-go's gynecologist <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be hard to talk <laughs> My mom and dad were always, well, my mom especially came to just about every concert that she could. And I left Baltimore when I was 21 in my father's pickup truck with a friend of mine and drove to LA and knew a couple people. And they were so supportive to let, it, the last thing they said, and I think they said to Jane too on the phone, please don't join any cults. <laughs> I mean, that was their big worry that I was going to join a cult. But then, you know, kind of upstairs. Roll forward many years. I have both of them sitting on the side of the stage and we're playing Madison Square Garden. I, I made them proud. That's all I want to do, you know? Because it was scary for them. No, I'm not giving it any <laughs> <laughs> Gina's mom, June, was amazing. Always at, I don't even know how she did it at almost every show, but this, when we, it was about five years ago, we were on the tour bus touring, obviously. And um, June was in, oh, I think it was about midnight. We were watching, uh, we put Jane's, Jane's phone, had grinder on it, and we put that up on the, the screen. And June, how old was she, maybe like 90? 90. 90. She was right there with us going, ew, look at the hair on that guy. Oh my God. I mean, she was phenomenal and such a big support. And we miss her. Um, just one more parent story. My, my mom, I moved to L.A. from Texas, from Austin, Texas, when I was 19. And um, my mom was really supportive. She kind of let me do whatever I want. She, was, she practiced free-range parenting. And, um, my dad, however, was very, he, we, I didn't have a relationship with him. And um, when I asked him for money to help me buy an electric guitar and an amp, he was like, no, that's a lifestyle of little substance and worth. And... Um, so fast forward two years later and we're on tour and we're in Oklahoma and my dad came with his wife and it was one of my uh, best moments as a go well, as an early go-go, as a successful go-go. He said, um, I was wrong and I've got your records right next to my Merle Haggard. <laughs> <laughs> it was really awesome. Yay. Okay. We have time for a few, yes. 
I know where this is going. <laughs> Everybody asks. It's such a hard question because it's very different to experience. But I, you know, I've been saying I'm the eldest of four girls, so I understand sisterhood and I feel this sisterhood with these with these guys. I feel like I got to know them personally a little bit better than than the guys in the, in the Eagles. Um, but it is a very different experience. As the male energy is very different than the feminine energy, and this is a. I think both films are about friendship in some ways, um, but this is more. I, there's more competition in the Eagles, and this was more about pain that was as a result of, of that. And, uh, and I just feel a real affinity with these gals, so it's, it's a tough one to answer, though. Yeah. Yes, um, Yasmin Um How do you get in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yeah. 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 Well, I'm not going to say what we usually say about the <laughs> singers, you but, you know, It'll happen, but at the same time, we don't feel like we need any validation from them. Right. <laughs> a couple of jabs about that in the film that we were completely prepared in October to take out, assuming they were going to be <laughs> brought into this, this and that it finally admit it. So, anyway, they're in there now. So. Yeah, we're not in the hall. We have time for a few more. We just went for it. We had a focus and a, a, a vision and energy that just propelled us forward, and that is what it takes. And it's just believes in, in believing in what you what you were doing. You know, as we continued to write songs and be together and play, and I mean, it was just obvious to us. We were like, wow, okay, something's happening here. Having five of us didn't hurt at all, though, because it was the combined energy that made it work. Um, all these women that are kind of, you know, they're soloists or whatever, I kind of feel for them. I feel like they're like these little islands. And I guess I would suggest if you're going to be a solo artist, to surround your people, you know, try and have a lot of women, I guess. And, and good men. We love good men. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. You just have to, you just don't give up. You just, you just follow, you know, whatever you're, whatever you're, Keep focused on what you want to do. And, you know, I mean, look, if, when we try to get a record deal, there's there a million, we're, we're out trying to get all these different record deals with a million different companies. But remember, it only takes one. It takes one. And that's the sort of thing you need to focus on because there's going to be all this rejection, tons of rejection. And um, and that's what, like Jay said, have a team around you to be supportive in situations like that. It's really important. It, it helps to keep you going, you know? When you wake up and think, fuck it, I can't do this anymore. So, I know. That's it. We have time for one more question. Yeah, I know you've been. Um, I thought it was excellent, too, and I, I loved listening to you growing up. Uh, watching those that you guys have gone through the, the path of healing and all of that, did you guys ever reconnect with your original manager who had some yeah, of that? Yeah, I, I had close. We're still, uh, we're still in touch with her, and um, you know, we we feel like, you know, we felt like we really didn't ever want her to leave. You know, we, that was never our plan. And uh, with some distance, I mean, time and distance always kind of heals a little bit. But yeah, Ginger's been, uh, she sent us all texts before uh, yeah. the screening. And, I saw uh, her the other day. Yeah. So. She, she was in a, a pretty bad accident, so uh, she's been going through her own healing. She was hit by a truck, right? Yeah. You know, wow. So she's been going through her own healing, and it's been a really uh, devastating physical and emotional thing for her. But we love her very much. We 
do love her, we care about her, we want the best for her, and as Kathy said, we didn't want her to leave. That was her choice, and uh, we were all surprised when one day she was just gone. It's like, we tried to call Ginger. She moved to New York. We were all surprised when it happened, but we didn't want her to go. Unfortunately, I'm being told to wrap up, but is there any final words you guys want to say? Where, where can we see the movie in the future? Are we working on that? <laughs> we're touring. We're going to be doing a tour this summer in, in uh, September 12th. <laughs> um, and we're going to have a job with the Thanks for those. Yeah. If you guys like the movie, tweet about it, talk about it, so that we can get to that people.